Welcome to Green Numbers Data Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use regular expressions to make your code more flexible. In coding, we often need to search for specific strings, and there are functions that help us to do this, such as the find function. But what if you're not looking for a specific string value, but a string pattern? For example, rather than a specific phone number, you're looking for any phone number. For this kind of search, we need a more powerful tool. This is where regular expressions really shine. With regular expressions, we can search for a pattern, perform fuzzy matching, find and replace a value matching a pattern, and extract a value matching a pattern and save it to a variable. This is the third green number video on regular expressions. This one focuses on extracting a value using a pattern and saving it to a variable. In previous videos in this series, I demonstrated matching using a pattern and find and replace using a pattern. For this video, we're going to match against this data set, text files, with a column named text that includes a sample of text values and sentences. You can see that within these values, there are phone numbers, social security numbers, and dates. In this example, I'm going to show you the function prxsubster which is used to extract a value and save it to a variable. This is a call function, meaning PRX substr is preceded by the word call, followed by PRX substr, kind of like the substring function, followed by open and close parens. This function takes four arguments. The first is the pattern we're matching. For this, let's use the variable name pattern. We'll come back to this in a moment. The second argument is the variable we're matching against, which again is text coming from this data set here. The third argument is the name of the variable we want to store the starting position of the matched value in a string. Let's call it start. If this doesn't make sense yet, it should in a moment. Now the fourth argument is optional, but almost always necessary. It is the name of the variable we want to store the length of the matched value in a string. Let's call it length. For call routines, our pattern has to be compiled before the routine is called. To do this, we use the PRX parse function to create our pattern and save it to the variable pattern. Remember, we use this variable in our PRX substr function. So let's set this equal to PRX parse. And PRX parse takes just one argument, the pattern we're matching. Our pattern is created inside quotes and forward slashes like this. For this example, let's match a social security number. So our pattern is three digits. And if you saw the previous videos in the series, you know the digit wildcard is backslash lowercase d. The three digits are followed by a dash. But the dash is a special character in regular expressions. So we need to add a backslash in front of it. So SAS compiles it as a literal value instead of the wildcard value. Then we need to add two more digits, followed by a dash, again preceded with a backslash, followed by four more digits. Let's put a semicolon at the end of this and run this code. We see that there were two text values that included a social security number pattern. The first one is observation 15, which starts at position one and is 11 characters long. The second is observation 16, which starts at position 12 and is also 11 digits long, or 11 characters long. So what do we do with these values? Well, let's go back to our code. So we use them in the substring function. So let's create a new variable named SSN, and let's use the substring function on text. The second argument of the substring function is the starting position of the value we want to extract. Our start variable holds this position. So let's use that variable here. The third argument is the length of the value we want to extract. And our length variable holds this. Let's go ahead and drop start, length, and pattern. Just to clean things up a bit before we run this. Now we see our SSN values are stored in our SSN variable. But if we look at our log, we see we're getting invalid syntax messages. 
because all of our values that didn't match our pattern had values of zero for the start variable and zero for the length variable. We can clean this up by adding an if statement with a PRX match. So let's add this here. And we already defined our pattern up above. And again, we're setting the pattern on the variable text. This way, we'll only use a substring function on values that match our pattern. So let's run this again. Now we see our SSN values are stored in our SSN variable and our log is clean. But what if we have more than one match in a string? For example, we have two dates in observation 16, right here and right here. We'll tackle this in example two. First, let's create our pattern. This is a call routine. So as we did in example one, we need to compile our pattern first. The pattern is more complex than the previous example. We're looking for two dates in a line and we need to add capture buffers around each. First, let's create our date format. Because a month could be one or two digits, we need to be able to account for that. Let's match a digit by using backslash lowercase d, and if we use curly braces afterwards, we can specify that we want at least one digit, but no more than two. Our month is followed by a forward slash, but because it's a special character, let's precede it with a backslash. Our day is the same as our month, at least one, but no more than two. Our day is followed by a forward slash, again preceded with a backslash. And our year is four digits. But we can also use curly braces for this. But this time, we'll just include the number four, indicating that we want exactly four digits. Now our pattern is complete, so let's add parens around it to add it as a capture buffer. Now we're looking for another date, so let's copy this entire pattern and paste it after the first one. Now we have two dates and two different capture buffers, but there must be something between these two dates, even if it's just a space. So inside brackets, we can add the wildcard for word character and non-word character, meaning we wanna match at least one word character or at least one non-word character. Let's put a plus at the end of it to indicate one or more. We we'll use the PRX POSIN function to find the start and the length of these dates. PRX POSIN, or PRX position as I like to call it, is used in conjunction with PRX match or another PRX function. In this PRX match function, we look for our pattern within the text values and save it to the variable match. Like in example one, we only want to save the values that match our pattern. So if we use an if statement, if match is greater than zero, meaning if the text value matched our pattern, then run the code inside the do loop. Let's go over the syntax for the PRX position function. It starts with call, then PRX posin, followed by open and close parens, and inside the parens are four arguments. The first is our pattern. Next is the number of our capture buffer. I used a one for this line because we're gonna capture the first instance of a date in our text strings. Like PRX substr, the next argument is the starting position for the first capture buffer. I'm saving it to the start one variable. And last is the length of our capture buffer. I'm saving it to the length one variable. Like we did with PRX substr, we use our start and length variables to extract our value using the substring function. And in this case, save it to the variable date one. Then we repeat the PRX position function and the substring function again, this time using capture buffer two, meaning the second instance of our pattern in our text strings. You'll see I use different variables to save the starting position and the length for the second capture buffer. So let's run this code. We see that observation 16 is the only value that included two dates. Date one correctly holds the first date in the string. Date two correctly holds the second date. There are lots of websites that list the meta characters and show examples of different patterns. One is this SAS regular expression tip sheet, which groups them by behavior category. I put this link and a couple of others in the description including a couple that demonstrate using PRX substring and PRX position. And that's it for this video. 
Hopefully you learned how regular expressions can make you a more efficient and flexible programmer. If you haven't seen them already, I encourage you to watch the first two videos in the series, focusing on pattern matching and finding and replacing a pattern. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to get more content. Thanks for watching.